Hey everyone, Scott Davenport here. So in the last Luminar video, we covered quite a bit of ground. We built a photo from the ground up, applying our own filters, talked about adjustment layers and adding those, as well as a bit on masking, some luminosity masks and some gradient shape masks. So in this video, I'm going to kind of round out the other things that are available in Luminar. And these are you know, things you may not use every time you're editing a photo, but when you're working on one of those really special images, these are kind of things that will help you get the most out of your photo. So let's get started. Now the first thing I want to cover here is a bit more about masking. So here I've got two different layers. Uh, these are both adjustment layers. You can tell by these sliders here. And I have a mask applied to the top layer. And let me bring up the masking brush. So we have our controls here. Now the first thing I want to do is show you the mask. And you can see I've just kind of painted this mostly covering the house so that the filters I have in this layer are going to apply to this house. The thing I want to show you in particular is in this gear menu, we've got controls to feather as well as make the mask denser or not. So I'll turn that back on so we can see this. Now watch as I feather, look at the edges of the mask. They're going to get softer and softer and softer. We're especially noticing it out here, right? Covering less and less of the house. That's way too much feathering here. But this is a nice tool to be able to fine tune and control your mask. So as you're getting painted in and around certain objects, you need to make things smooth. These controls are sometimes easier than trying to use a brush and painting at a lower opacity. Similarly, the density, we've painted everything here at full strength. We can start to back off how much of this mask. I'm really controlling. And you can see what's happening here is the sky is starting to get some of the masking effect. Luminar's figured out that I've covered more than half of the photo with the mask. So as I start to change the density, it's looking at well, what's left and it's going to add in this effect to other areas, fundamentally saying I'm in, you know, decreasing the density of what I've removed because I did all my painting out here. One other trick with masking is here's my masking brush and notice there's a plus in the center of it. That means I'm in a paint in mode, right? So if I start sweeping through the sky, I start to paint in some of that mask. If I press the X key, you'll see it changes to a minus and now I can erase parts of my mask. So as you are trying to fine tune a mask, Toggling the brush mode between paint in and paint out, plus or minus, with the X key is a big time saver. You don't have to keep going up to the toolbar to change the mode of your mask. Now let's have a look at the other type of layer we can add, an image layer. So in the Layers panel, we have Add New Image Layer. And this allows you to select another photo from your computer and bring it into Luminar to work with as part of your original photo that you're working on. So why do you want to do this? You might want to blend textures. You might want to do some double exposure type looks. Uh, you might want to do some type of compositing and masking things away. So you add a new image layer to bring some other image in. And so in this case, I brought this, you know, this concrete brick thing here, and I want to do some blending with it. I'm just going to look at the blending modes and there are a whole bunch of different ones, but things like overlay, are pretty nice for changing the way this interacts with the photo beneath it um, or soft light. And these require a little bit of experimentation. They have some math behind them and it just depends on the type of photo you have as well as the other image you're trying to blend together to see how these things are going to look. But this is uh, one way to accomplish texture blending. Of course, the simpler way to accomplish texture blending while we're on the topic, let me right click on this and delete that layer is actually I'll add a new adjustment layer and I will find the texture overlay. And right in here we can click load a texture, right? And we have our blend mode and we can change things here. So if you're working with a single layer, you don't have to add another image layer. You can do that with the texture blend to do things relatively quickly and have it all be kind of right there. I mean, you know, you've got your opacity control here and we can do, you know, different things with those overlay modes to get the different types of blends that we want. One last thing I want to drive home with adjustment layers is there a convenient way to stack presets. 
Now we have our presets here at the bottom and I'll just grab Auto Smart Enhancer and apply that. Now what's the preset doing? It's adding a bunch of different filters with some slider settings into a layer. We can add another adjustment layer and I can choose another preset. And let's say I wanna add, I don't know, something more dramatic for this one and maybe dramatic grungy. Now what's nice is I'm adding this in. I've got another layer that's got just my dramatic setting. I can control how much of that preset I want. And I'm fundamentally adjusting the opacity of all of these things, right? That opacity right here on these layers is what's being changed when I apply the slider in the preset thumbnail. So this is a cool way to stack a few different types of looks together and then just using the controls in the presets area or the opacity on the individual layer, you can blend these different looks together to get something completely unique. That's gonna wrap it all up. You know, to summarize what we covered in these uh, six videos here is you can apply presets if you want that one-click look. You can tailor the preset after applying it. You can add adjustment layers and start really crafting things and using masking to target different looks to different areas of your scene. And you can add new image layers to blend in textures or create double exposure looks and so forth. So Luminar has got a lot of capabilities in it. Hope this is going to get you uh, on the road to having fun with Luminar, taking your images in a new direction. If you've got questions about Luminar, I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me through my website and I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks very much.